dear shareholders, uh, my greetings to all of you who are present, and uh, greetings to everyone listening on the internet. I would like to extend a very cordial welcome to all of you to the annual general meeting of Fresenius. And to begin with, I am very pleased by your interest in our company. So, what do you expect to hear from me today? Surely you want to hear some statements concerning our business development, uh, figures regarding our sales, earnings, and the dividend. Surely you also want to hear a little bit about the offer to acquire Acorn, which we have now terminated, as well as about our goals and plans for the future. In short, you want to know how your company is doing. And I can promise you right now, you will be hearing all of this from me in just a few moments. And you will be hearing a lot of good news as well. Prior to that, though, I would like to draw your attention to something else, namely to the basis of our economic success, namely to what makes all of this possible in the first place. And this is what we do for the benefit of our patients, namely what we do in order to ensure that we're able to care for in more and more people with both high quality and yet affordable health care. Allow me to express this in figures. As you can see on this slide, this is our year in numbers, but not numbers on sales or earnings, but on our patients, treatments, births. These are the numbers that really make me very proud. Every day, 200 babies come into the world in one of our hospitals. And every 0 0.7 seconds, 0 0.7 seconds, we perform dialysis treatment. These are only two examples. But that is what Fresenio stands for. And we are constantly expanding our offering of products and services. We're investing in better treatments, higher quality, more modern hospitals and clinics, so that our patients will feel better, and also our employees who look after our patients. This has been and will continue to remain our motivation. This has been and will remain the basis of our success. And Fresenius is successful, very successful, in fact. So now allow me to briefly summarize the most relevant facts. 2017 was another record year in which we significantly increased both our sales and net income. For the 14th consecutive time, sales exceeded the 30 billion euro mark for the first time. We met all of our targets. And at the start of 2000, uh, of the year, we were able to close the Kiron Salute acquisition. Um, and we are making excellent progress on its integration. We announced the purchase of Next Stage by Fresenius Medical Care, with which we will be strengthening our position in home dialysis. Another milestone was the acquisition of the biosimilars business from Merck here in Germany, um, and which marks our entry into a new and very promising field of therapy. And when looking ahead, we want to continue our strong growth in the future. Let's take a closer look at the individual figures now. Please take special note of the growth rates at constant currency. In all cases, they are in double digits. Sales, 33.9 billion euros, an increase of 16%. Operating income, or EBIT, 4.9 billion euros, a gain of 15%. Net income, almost 1.9 billion euros, 21% higher than in the previous year. I'm sure that you will agree with me that these are outstanding results. They also show that Fresenius is continuing to grow in a stable and dynamic way. How stable is Fresenius? Well, as I've already pointed out, um, and you can see this here in the slide, 2017 was our 14th consecutive record year. 
For 14 years in a row, we have posted strong growth, averaging 12% for sales and a full 22% for net income. When you see this expressed in this chart, this growth seems to look like it's the most natural thing in the year, as if someone had just simply drawn a line using a ruler. But I can assure you that this is the result of a lot of hard work, hard work that has been performed by our employees around the world. And in the meantime, we now have more than 270,000 employees, a fantastic team, many very dedicated and committed men and women. And I can assure you, it is great pleasure to work with them because they daily um, work hard to help our patients in hospital wards, protection plants, laboratories, and offices. Every day uh, they do their work, and this is what makes our success possible. And so I would like to extend my uh, sincere thanks to our employees, and I believe I'm also doing this on your behalf as well. You all know that when Fresenius's earnings rise, the dividend also increases. This is why we would like to propose that it be raised to 75 euro cents, which means an increase of a very healthy 21%. This would be the 25th consecutive increase, which is another sign of our stability and our reliability. And I hope that um, I'm hoping for your approval. I would have liked to have been able to present you with similarly good news with regard to our shares. Although we have to ascertain that we are very successful as a business and that we have continued to grow, our share price dropped 12% in 2017. One major trigger for this was the concern that the prices for generics could soon fall sharply in the United States. However, I wish to assure you here and today that at least in our business, we have not seen any indication of this drop. On the contrary, in this area, we have just achieved our best results ever once again, and we want to continue to grow, and we are going to continue to grow as well. Yet our share price has continued to fluctuate, and I hope and wish that this situation will change soon and that our share will start to develop once again in a way that reflects our success. Unfortunately, there is another issue that currently encumbers our share price. You've probably already guessed what I'm referring to, namely Acorn. Acorn is a US-based provider of generic pharmaceuticals. We wanted to acquire Acorn for Fresenius Kabi for a price of 4.8 billion US dollars. Last year, I outlined here what we aim to achieve with the acquisition and what our plans were. This was meant to be a very targeted and sensible expansion of our liquid, liquid pharmaceuticals offering. However, we then received anonymous allegations of misconduct by Bacon, and they were so specific that we were compelled to investigate them. And that is why we launched an independent investigation. And I'm sorry to say that the investigators actually found evidence of misconduct. For example, they found material breaches of data integrity requirements. Um, ACORN has therefore seriously violated regulations set down by the US authorities. And that is against everything that we stand for. And therefore, we had to respond. The, this decision was certainly not an easy one. But at the end of the day, there was only one correct course to take. We would no longer pursue the acquisition. On April 22nd, we terminated the agreement. You might perhaps say now, well, couldn't you have found this out ahead of time? Did you really take a close look at ACORN before making your purchase officer? Yes, we did. We looked very closely, in fact. This was the most intensive due diligence process that I've ever experienced at Fresenius. And I've been with the company for a number of years now. 
this uh, process uh, corresponded to the highest standards, everything that is customary in such a large takeover, but the breaches and deficiencies happened in areas where we were not allowed to have any access. You should not forget Acorn and Fresenius Copy are direct competitors. In addition to this, Acorn is also listed on the stock exchange. And in this case, there are extremely sensitive areas, particularly product development, where we are simply not allowed to take a closer look at prior to the purchase. However, we secured contractual assurances or covenants from Acorn in our purchase agreement. However, our investigation has shown that these assurances were incorrect. And that is why we were able to terminate the purchase agreement, and that is also why we did so. We would have liked to have given ACORN more time, more time for them to conclude their own investigation, more time in order for them to present us with more information. However, ACORN rejected our offer. For us, that speaks volumes. And therefore, we had to draw the necessary conclusions both in the interests of our company and also in your interests, our shareholders. ACORN disagrees with our decision, but that was to be expected. Now a U.S. court will have to decide. We believe that our decision to terminate the agreement was right and fully justified, and we are also going to defend our arguments and position vigorously. We will continue to pursue the strategic goals of the planned acquisition. We want to broaden, broaden our product offering in North America, and we want to expand our range of IV generics. These goals were and remain valid. We continue to be very well positioned. We have the best prerequisites possible. Even without ACORN, uh, the development of Fresenius Kabi in North America has been outstanding. And even though this acquisition has not proceeded as planned, it shows one thing very clearly, namely that we are not resting on our laurels with regard to our success. We are not only concerned about our current and day-to-day -day business, but we continue to look ahead precisely at a time when the company is doing very well from a position of strength. And we are working very hard to remain successful in the future as well, to strengthen and to expand the foundations of our growth. But this also inalienably of, involves taking a certain calculated risk. But this is also the only way to seize opportunities and use them to our benefit. Our top goal is clear, to make Fresenius fit for the future, even fitter to be precise. This did not work with ACORN, but it has paid off. It has paid off on many, many projects in recent years. Allow me to give you a few examples. In 2017, we closed the acquisition of Kiron Salud, which I already mentioned. This allowed us to welcome 35,000 new colleagues and to make Fresenius Helios international. Helios now operates about 150 hospitals and clinics in Germany and in Spain, and we have opened up entirely new opportunities for collaboration and new opportunities to learn the best practices from each other. For example, within the framework of joint quality management programs, but we are also discussing initiatives in digitization or the joint purchasing of medical products, for example. And of course, we are going to promote the exchange of knowledge between our doctors and nursing staff in the two countries, always for the health and well-being of our patients. In recent years, we have also invested heavily. We are constantly renovating and modernizing our hospitals. This keeps them attractive for our patients and we are improving the provision of health care to entire regions. In the German city of Duisburg, for example, we completely rebuilt the, a new hospital building there. I had the privilege of attending the, the inauguration. 
It's a great facility, modern, highly functional, offering a high level of patient comfort and a significantly wider range of services. We also opened a completely new hospital building in Nordenham near Bremen in northern Germany. You can see a picture of this hospital in the photo on the upper right-hand corner. And I hope you can also see how delighted the patients are the, and the employees are. People are happy to be working in a facility like this, and patients who are facing a stay in a hospital want to go there. Kiron Salud is also making major investments. In Madrid, we are building Spain's first center for proton beam therapy. This is an advanced method for treating cancer treatment. It is extremely precise and causes fewer side effects for patients. We are also undertaking a major expansion of our university hospital in Madrid, and we're building a brand new hospital about 30 kilometers, less than 20 miles away, in Alcala de Janeiros. Altogether, if we take a look at all of the projects at Fresenius Helios, then this investment volume is well over 1 billion euros. That's a lot of money. But it's also money that we are happy to spend for better medicine and for the benefit of our patients and for the long-term success of our and your company. The same applies to Fresenius Cabi, where we also made major investments in 2017 in our production facilities worldwide, for example, in Mila in Turing in Germany and Grand Island in the United States, in Portugal and in China as well. We are investing in additional machinery to meet the strong demand for our products. And we're also investing in even better machinery so that our processes and products will be even safer. Another important strategic step for us was the acquisition of the biosimilars business from Germany's Mac, the details of which I explained to you about one year ago. This will take us into the field of biologic drugs. These drugs are highly effective and are becoming more and more important in medicine. We closed this acquisition in September and are making outstanding progress on the integration, which is already bearing fruit. In December, we submitted our first marketing authorization application for biosimilar in Europe. The planned takeover of Next Stage by Fresenius Medical Care is another forward-looking step. As I stated earlier, this involves home dialysis. This is a treatment methodology that is steadily growing in importance. We also want to be a world leader in this area, and we expect to close this acquisition this year. On the other hand, we are selling uh, our participation in Sound Physicians. Sound is a network of physicians in the United States that Fresenius uh, Medical Care acquired the majority of in 2014. At that time, the goal was to understand how to provide uh, value-based health care for patients in the most efficient way. And we have achieved this goal, and we've learned an awful lot as well, and we're already using and drawing upon this experience and know-how. And that's what makes this such a good time to sell uh, divesting sound will bring us a pre-tax book gain of 800, of about 800 million euros. And we will es invest the proceeds very judiciously in other areas, thus creating further growth. Fresenius Vomit has not only just expanded its established business last year, no, they have also acquired another rehabilitation clinic, this one in Savis in Switzerland. We already have a leading position in the growing field of rehabilitation in Austria, and now outside of Fresenius Vomit's home market as well. Last year, Fresenius Vomit also opened an institute for gender medicine, where we are working very closely together with the Medical University of Vienna. And the knowledge developed and gained here will be used to tailor individual therapies with an emphasis on prevention and rehabilitation. Dear shareholders, these are just a few examples, examples of how we are preparing for the future and how we are going to face the challenges that we will have tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. And 
this also includes the opportunities that will come with these challenges. I would now like to take a closer look at one of the biggest of these opportunities. It is hidden a bit behind the term that I've already mentioned, value-based health care. The German translation would be something like quality-orientated health care. I have to admit, this still sounds very complicated. But allow me to briefly explain what this means. If we take a look at the current state of all healthcare systems, or almost all healthcare systems around the world today, the focus to date has always been on the resources being deployed. Individual services were remunerated with a set fee. And the results and the actual outcome of the treatment, that is the benefit to the patient, tended to be ignored for the most part. But what does value-based health care do differently? They take a look at these two factors. Firstly, the cost, but they also take a look at the benefits to the patient. And assist in a system like this, they link the remuneration for medical services with the proven medical quality of the treatment. We are convinced that this is the future of health care because a system like this can focus on the well-being of patients while still maintaining control over our costs. We are preparing for this development very intensively for the future. And again, I could show you this through two examples. The first comes from the Spanish capital of Madrid. Quiron Salud is caring for the population of an entire city district. We are talking about more than 800,000 people for whose health care we are now responsible. In return, we received a pick fixed payment. However, the patients are not obliged to come to our hospitals and clinics. They could go elsewhere for their treatments. But if they do, then we will be receiving a bill that we would have to pay. So we can only be commercially successful under one prerequisite, namely if the patients assigned to us actually choose to use our hospitals because they are satisfied with the quality of our treatments and the treatments that we're able to offer. The second example comes from the United States, where Fresenius Medical Care is playing a leading role in a large-scale pilot project for the integrated treatment of dialysis patients. This means we are responsible for providing comprehensive care to patients that encompasses much more than just dialysis treatment. It includes all of the illnesses that these patients may have. After the first year, the results have been very positive. Our patients were ho hospitalized significantly less often and costs fell. Value based health care specifically means, in a very tangible way, more benefit to the patients at a lower cost to the healthcare system. These concepts are not easy to implement, they require many different skills and capabilities, which we have and which we are continuing to expand. We have enormous quantities of data that we are able to analyze in order to detect connections and patterns. And we are leaders in measuring and ensuring medical quality. We have broad experience across the field of healthcare. This includes the building and equipping of hospitals and employing the latest treatment methods. We manufacture drugs and medical devices and we also use them ourselves. And last but not least, our company has the necessary size. We are big enough to utilize important synergies and to create cost efficiencies. We are big enough to provide quality and accessibility in every situation, both in terms of our products, but it also applies to our services as well. This combination of capabilities is unique. They make us special. They set us apart from our competitors, and they also mean that when we're talking about value-based healthcare, we are the ideal partner. I am certain that this is going to be one of the key uh, bases for our foundations for our success in the future. And yes, 
we are also going to continue to be successful in the future. In 2018, we are expecting another record year, which would be the 15th year in a row. Um, revenues are expected to grow strongly at constant currency, sales by 5 to 8 percent, and earnings by 6 to 9 percent. If we factor out the capital expenditures for biosimilars, then uh, this would be an actual increase of 10 to 13 percent. Our prospects are excellent. We had a very strong first quarter. Uh, this has confirmed our expectations, and that makes us even more confident about the rest of the year. So everything indicates that our strong performance will continue, also in the midterm and in the long run. And that is why we've also confirmed our 2020 targets. I believe that they are ambitious but realistic targets, nevertheless. For, at Fresenius, we expect sales to increase on average by 7 to 10 percent per year, uh, and net income is expected to increase even more strongly by an average of 8 to 12 percent annually. Dear shareholders, as you can see, Fresenius has been highly successful for many years now, and Fresenius will continue to be highly successful in the coming years. We are working nonstop to make our company fit for the future. How? Well, that's what I've already reported to you today. I have shown you some examples of how we are going to invest in our future. Investments that will continue well past 2020. Our entry into biosimilars, the generic drugs of the future. This will cost some money initially, of course, but it is the right step in the right direction at the right time. The expansion of our home dialysis activities, the internationalization of Fresenius Helios, and our huge investments to secure even more quality and efficiency in our production. These are all examples of how we are working today to remain successful into the future. And thus, to be able to care for even more patients in ever more countries. As I said at the very beginning of this speech, that is what is important for us. We always put our patients first. This is the first priority before anything else. So before long, we will be seeing uh, 100,000 babies born at our hospitals, and we will provide more than 60 million dialysis treatments every year. And that remains our commitment, better medicine for more people. The dynamic growth of Fresenius will continue, and I would be very pleased if you were to continue to travel this path with us. Thank you very much.